This is a centrifugal surge graph and similar to a centrifugal water pump, how we have a flow graph where we can see where the optimum flow is, what kind of horsepower do we need, things like that. Well, every centrifugal compressor also has a surge graph and it's how we can monitor where the surge point is or where we are in relation to that point based off of our lift, the difference between condenser pressure and evaporator pressure and our flow, which is how much volume is moving through our impeller. Uh, one other way to think about flow is what position are your uh, IGVs and in your inlet guide vanes or if you're working on your York, a PRV, pre-rotation vane, means the same thing. So either way, we have a our graph here. So this will be the lower end of it. And this is where your surge line is going to be with a stall. So stall precedes a surge. When you get into a, a early unstable condition, just before surge happens, this will typically sound like a low end grumble or growl from a compressor and then you'll get a high pitched screeching or squeal type of noise from the compressor once you move into a surge and then your speed of this of the compressor plays a heavy factor now if you have a constant speed system then these speed lines don't really have any reference to you but a lot of modern systems are going to be variable speed moving forward and so that affects what our top end ceiling is for where we're going to be at in this graph at any given time. Now we do have thing known as choke as well. I'm not going to worry about that today. That's a whole other side of a of our system that we don't run into near as often. Most of us really tend to struggle more with the surge side of things. And it comes back to just a pure relationship between where is our lift and where is our flow. And this is what we're having to manage at any given time. And this is where, especially like with the low end side of it, if we're not able to uh, reduce our lift, meaning that let's say we have a, a hot condenser water or just a, a elevated condenser water temperature, but we need to unload. Well, it's really hard for these centrifugals to unload with elevated condenser water temps. Now, if you've got plenty of load and that IGV is able to open and you can get good volume through the compressor, then you could run some pretty high lift parameters and that's okay. And you can load your cooling towers up. But when you get into a condition where you're needing to unload, well, that's when you're really going to start to push this boundary because if that lift can't come down and track with this chart, then you're not going to you're not going to be able to reduce the flow or the volume through the compressor enough. Then you run into the risk of either surge or you overprocess the refrigerant and or the, the the leaving water i should say all this is about leaving water so if we overcool the leaving water well that's not good either and we end up pushing ourselves into our shutdowns which we don't want this thing to shut down for any reason whether it be for surge or for overshooting our set point so we have this balance that we have to get into at that point and even with a variable speed our system is having to balance uh speed and which affects how much lift we can manage and our actual flow with our IGV position. And it's trying to kind of keep these two to work together to skirt alongside this surge line as we load up until we can eventually get to where we can operate out here in this open area where we have lots of room to play even with elevated lift conditions because we have plenty of load on the system. So running, this, even with a, a lot of load, it's not that you have a lot more ceiling for lift, um, or it's not that you can't surge at a higher load condition. That's what I'm trying to say. You can, uh, but you're, you have more flexibility because there's more total flow and volume moving through the compressor at that point. Whereas with a lower side of the load, um, you just, you, you can't push that side of the, of the surge line that hard or that far without creating an issue for yourself. So just some things to think about. This is something to ponder on as a concept. Every compressor will have its own uh, graph like this. This is just a, a general representation of what that graph will resemble and look like. And your control systems have a graph like this programmed into them that as it's controlling the staging and the loading of the compressor, it knows where it's at in relation to this, uh, where these lines are. Now, not whether your machine has this graph available to you or not, like Yorks, for example, have a surge map where you can kind of come see a representation of this graph in a little bit different form. But this is essentially what it's trying to display to you from that perspective. Anyway, I'm Holden Schramberger. I'm with Chiller Academy and HVAC Time. 
Hope you really enjoyed this. If you'd like some more really good in-depth chiller training and take your chiller career to higher levels, please go check out Chiller Academy. I have an introduction to chillers course in there I think would really help you. Either way, MTT, make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. I'll see you around.